Standard of California, on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and Standard stations throughout the West, invites you to Let George Do It. The Elusive Hundred Grand, another adventure of George Valentine. Personal notice, danger's my stock and trade. If it's so off the beam, nobody can help you, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Dear Mr. Valentine, this is not a quiz program, but how would you like to get paid for spending a weekend at the fashionable resort of Las Rositas? Doing what? Just having fun. Indulging yourself luxuriously at my expense. Fulfilling an ambition most men merely dream about. Alas, these pleasures... Pleasure which I cast, I cast your feet applied me because I must spend the weekend being charming, glib, and hilarious. Entertaining the wealthy yokels in the peacock room of the Pioneer Hotel, where you can reach me if this letter intrigues you. Just write, wire, or simply drop in, signed, Walter Haney. You know, you keep reading that letter, Angel, and I'm going to stop and make you hitchhike the rest of the way to Las Rositas. Well, I'm sorry, George, but I'm fascinated. Hmm? Things like this just don't happen to people. Unless they guess the name of the song. With humor like that, Brooksy, you may be able to follow Walter Haney in the peacock room. <laughs> yeah, but seriously. Why would a man who's been a star for years making thousands of dollars a week write a letter like this? Maybe it's just a gag. Uh-uh. Well, how do you know? I call the hotel. There's a suite waiting for me, all paid for. Oh, a whole big suite. Yep, that's right. So I reserved a room for you on the second floor, right over the laundry. Right over the laundry. Well, I'm sorry. It's all I had, Brooksy. Oh. Besides, I'm not Walter Haney. This comes out of office expenses. Well, at least I'll be around to watch you indulge yourself luxuriously. Oh, I don't know about that, Brooksy. Hmm? Could be it's Walter who's indulging himself at my expense. Dear Valentine, there's something I want you to spend for me. $15,000 in cash. Jeepers. May I touch it? Hey, now, even with Miss Brooks' help, I may not be able to spend that much in one weekend. Then what? With what I have in mind, Valentine, you'll get rid of it in a few minutes. Splurge the whole fifteen grand, Haney? On what? I'll come to that. But I should explain. At the moment, this is all the money I have in the world. Well, then you'd better take care of it. If you read anything about me in the papers, Miss Brooks, you know that next to breathing, I'm supposed to love gambling best. Well, look, why don't you go out and throw it away yourself? This town's wide open for gambling. Yeah, that's the hitch. I could sneak out between acts, but I'm not allowed to gamble. Well, what do you mean by that? You're over 21. I'm in debt to a syndicate now for over $100,000. I know how to pay them back, but it's a gamble. And that's the one thing that they won't let me do. Oh, it's like that, huh? Yeah, they have a shifty-eyed character named Marty Ool shadowing me. Won't even let me get near a slot machine. Go ahead, Henry. Uh, this means a gray deal to me. If I weren't allergic to melodrama, I'd say it was a matter of life or death. Now, here's what I want you to do, Valentine. Yeah? There's an art dealer in this town who I suspect maintains a so-called gallery merely to, to, to fleece visiting millionaires. Oh, something you won't find in the guidebooks, huh? Well, Mr. Dirksen's particularly proud of one item in his flytrap. It's a much sought-after Etruscan vase by one Alberto Molini, 1506-1568. I take it it isn't just something you put flowers in. No. If it's the real thing, old man, it's worth much more than $15,000. Yeah, but the poor houses are full of characters who've tried to outwit the connoisseurs. Miss Brooks... When I'm not doing other foolish things with my life, I dabble in artistic obscurities. Once I found a Fra Angelo in an attic. <laughs> Only it turned out to be an amazing fake. But I still think that there's nothing like... Nothing like coming to the point, Henny. Yes. Well, if I'm right, Valentine, Mr. Dirksen's vase is not only authentic, but it's the mate of another masterpiece by Molini. All of which adds up to what? A hundred thousand dollars. My, how you do toss off round numbers. Oh, I'm quite serious, Miss Brooks. There's a fabulous cattleman, one uh, Hank McCrary, who lives just outside of town here, and who owns the other Molini. Incidentally, he does use it to put flowers in. He can afford it. Uh-huh. And he'll pay you the hundred grand? As I said, if I'm right about Dirksen's vase, that's the gamble. I may lose my fifteen thousand... This Hank McCrary, he knows as much about these things as he does about longhorn stairs. Well, it seems to me a simple risk for you to walk in and make the purchase yourself, as long as your intentions are honorable. <laughs> you don't know these gentlemen I'm indebted to. Flinty individuals, one and all. 
And they don't believe in anyone gambling with what they consider their money. Oh, Walter, I didn't know you had visitors. I was inside knitting. Did I hear... Uh, oh, Adele, I want you to meet some friends. Miss Brooks, uh, Mr. Valentine. Oh, how do you do? How do you do, Mr. Valentine? Oh, I'm glad to meet you too, Miss Hayden. Oh, Walter, just what are you up to now? Now, look, please, Adele. You know, Mr. Valentine, my brother doesn't tell me a thing that's going on. Really? Still, I don't know what he'd do without me. Which reminds me, Walter, I'm going down to see the manager. Adele, I... Uh... shall tell him we want those lights changed for your performance. And you'll be sure to take a nap now, dear. Oh, yes. Goodbye, Mr. Valentine. Nice to have met you. Me too. Oh, Miss Brooks, you must forgive my sister. She makes my work her whole life. Hey, you know, Haney, between a staid sister and a gambling syndicate, you don't seem to have a life of your own. <laughs> I'm rather sensitive about that, old boy. Supposing we don't discuss it, hmm? Is it a deal? Why not? There's no law against it. And it's your money. Good. Believe me, I'm more worried about Adele than I am about myself. She can't sleep because of that $100,000 debt. I see. Oh, Brooksy, you'd better go and check in. Oh, yeah. My room over the laundry. I want to see what I can find out about Mr. Dirksen. I'll meet you downstairs in the drugstore. Valentine, huh? I want to see you outside a minute before you leave the hotel. Well, who are you? I take it you got a name, or am I being presumptuous? The name's Marty Ool. And I told you I want to talk to you outside. Oh. The patio. The boy from the syndicate, huh? Yeah. Haney mentioned you. I said outside. Okay, okay. Well, here we are, Marty. Alone at last. I don't know what Haney is cooking up with you, How but... did you know about me and Haney at all? Now, never mind. Just shut up. But look, I'm warning you. Stay away from him. Oh, well, gee, thanks for telling me, Mr. Rule. Yeah. I might have stuck around town and got into an awful lot of trouble. Yeah, yeah, real trouble. Get it? I think I'll show you just what it's like. <laughs> Something like this. <laughs> oh. <sighs> Thanks for the warning, Marty. But you know you shouldn't try to scare people out of town like that. Would you mind waiting for me, Mr. Valentine? Hmm? Oh? Well, ordinarily, no, but right now I'm in a hurry. It's all right if I come along, isn't it? Hey, you know, this seems to be my day for meeting people I don't know. You know, you could have taken a cab. Then the driver wouldn't have to ask you such questions as, who are you anyway? Lola? Just Lola, huh? Isn't that enough? <laughs> Tell me, why did you come here to Las Rositas to see Walter Haney? Oh, now this is getting to be a routine. What did he say to you? And I thought you wriggled in here because you were interested in me and me alone. I could be interested in you, if you would answer my questions. So this is how beautiful redheads named Lola act. I must know why he wanted to see you. How did you even know I met Hank? Suppose we stop off down the block for a drink. I'm sure you'll tell me what I want to know. Huh? Huh? But this is a five and ten cent store. It's a bus stop, too, Lola. It's as far as we're going together. But I thought Me, we were... too. But suddenly I remembered all my Boy Scout badges. Bye, Lola. You know, I'll find out what I want anyway. Sure, I know you will, but I don't want to make it any easier for you. Oh, yeah. You still didn't tell me who you are. I mean, aside from being Lola. I'm nobody. I'm just Walter Haney's bride. This was supposed to be our honeymoon. Walter Haney? Hey, wait a minute. Just don't tell his sister. She found out she might drop dead. I hope. <laughs> What'd you find out about Dirksen, darling? The most charitable report. Nothing they could send him to jail. Hmm. Oh. So these are the galleries. <laughs> well, let's go in and get it over with. Oh, welcome, welcome. Dirksen's temple of art is honored. 
We want to buy a vase, Buster. Yeah, and the five and ten didn't have just what we wanted. What? You do not understand. I surround myself with only the most precious objects d'art. That's fine. I'm talking about the Molini. Uh, you see here, only the... The Molini? Yeah, 1506-1568. But most important, 15,000 bucks. Uh, sit down, dear lady. Uh, dear gentleman. Uh, dear, dear... I do not know how I can bring myself to part with it. It would cause me such pain here in my heart. That could be indigestion, Mr. Derrickson. Oh, look at it. Isn't it beautiful? Uh, 20,000, perhaps? I don't think your indigestion is that bad, friend. It's 15. You are fortunate. Money means nothing to me. You brought the cash, of course. That Haney fella wasn't trying to pass off a phony on me after all. This year vase is the real thing, Valentine. Eh? I mean, sure. Oh, it ought to be just the right thing for Petunia. Well, it was right there in Lost Rosarita's under my own nose. <laughs> well, that's life, Mr. McCurry. Now, I don't like being mercenary, but... Uh... Oh, yeah, yeah. Haney called me about that. Uh, I got the money right here. One thousand, two, uh, three. Oh, I just can't count. I'm too excited about getting that vase. Yeah, well, handling all that money would do things to me, too. Oh, but it's all there, Valentine. I'm a man of honor. Besides, I know when I'm getting the best of a good bargain. Uh, yeah. And so we leave the hallowed precincts of Fort Knox, otherwise known as McCreary's Ranch and make our way back to Las Rosaritas, the Monte Carlo of the West. <laughs> You're in rare form, Brooksy. Yeah, but not before I ask a couple of questions. Mm. Well, this gun for Marty and the redhead Lola you refuse to talk about. What's going on anyway, George? Long stories, I don't mind telling, Brooksy, but this is kind of complicated. You see it? Uh-oh, another one of my loyal followers. Mm. I knew my brother was planning something with you today, Mr. Valentine. Remarkable insight, Miss Haney. You don't have to play cat and mouse with me. I happen to know what this is all about and what's involved. Okay, that's the end of that game. What do we play next? Get in the car, Angel. Okay, George. Just a minute. Yeah? You probably think I'm interfering with my brother's life. Everybody does. But I'm going to protect him as long as I live against every grasping female that comes along. Miss against... Haney, this is just another job for me, and it's almost done. Frankly, that's all I'm interested in. I see. Would you mind giving me a lift back to the hotel? No, of course not. I'd like to see how it feels to ride with someone who's carrying so much cash. Well, here we go again. What do you mean, George? Look, in back of us. Huh? Oh, you mean that car? Yeah, we're being followed, and this time by experts. What's that? They're staying just a nice half block behind us, waiting for the time to close in. Well, hurry, do something. That money belongs to me and, and my brother. Every cent of it. They can go as fast as I can, Miss Haney, even a little faster. Knowing they're catching up with a hundred grand. We'll return to tonight's adventure of George Valentine in just a moment. If your car has one of today's high-compression engines, then here's great news for you. A new Chevron Supreme gasoline is now available, and it meets all the demands of today's high-powered cars. Gives your car faster starts, faster getaway in traffic, extra power that lifts your car over hills without a ping or an engine knock. A new Chevron Supreme gets the best out of your car. It's a premium-quality gasoline, climate-tailored for the West's different altitude and temperature zones. So wherever you drive, go on new Chevron Supreme. Bet your car's improved performance makes you agree you can't buy a better gasoline. Get it tomorrow at standard stations and independent Chevron gas stations where they say and mean we take better care of your car. And now 
Now back to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. A famous nightclub entertainer, Walter Haney by name, invites you to Las Rositas, a fabulous, really, gambling resort. Gives you $15,000 to buy a rare vase. That you do, and on a quick resale, end up with $100,000 in cash. You're headed back to turn the money over to your client when suddenly you notice a car on your tail. You've got to think fast, and if you're anything like George Valentine, you do. George, that car's getting closer. They'll take all that money away from you. You can't let them. Now, leave this to me, Miss Haney. Now, listen, Brooks. Yes, you George. see that cab parked up ahead? Uh-huh. When we get there, I'm going to slow down. You take over the wheel. But you'll never get to that cab without them seeing you. I want them to follow me. You oh. just keep going and get back to the Pioneer. Now, come on. Let Miss Haney sit on the outside so you can get to the wheel. Okay. I, I've got it. Good, good. Oh, but, Donnie, I wish you'd tell me what you're going to do. No time, Brooksy. Here I go. George! The oh. money... They'll find him. Take it away from him. Oh, Miss Haney, stop talking about that money. But it's my brother's. I'm beginning to wish I'd never heard of your brother. Keep going, Kevin. Keep going. Lose her, Kevin. Come on, snap out of it. What? You ain't been that care for quite a while, chum. What? We sent him on his way after we dragged you out. Don't you remember? Well, memory. Go on, ask me. When was the Spanish Armada sunk? I'll ask you. Where's that hundred grand? We've been all over you, and it's gone. I lost it in that crap game. Where'd you snatch it? Or did somebody get to you first? Who hired you for this job, monkey face? Dirksen? McCurry trying to get his money back? I'll ask the question. Marty Ole? Or maybe Lola trying to get the most out of a honeymoon? Okay, if that's the way you want to play it. Come on, Johnny. Give me another towel, will you? Yeah, sure thing, boss. But I think you'd be better off there getting a doctor. Yeah, you got a real smart hotel here, friend. I just don't want to shock any of the equally smart clientele when I leave this washroom. Ooh. Ooh. Ah, I feel better. Yeah, what happened to you anyway, boss? Look, is Walter Haney through with this last show in the Peacock Room yet? Well, let me see. Uh, just about, I guess. Swell, swell. Just wanted to give you time to freshen up, Valentine. Oh, Marty. Hey, you. Get out. Yeah, yeah, mister, but I work here. I said get out until I'm through. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, wait a minute. Let's be nice about this, Marty. I don't want this dance with you. I'm not up to it. Don't I know it, though. <laughs> and am I sorry. Look, if you're interested in money, I got $4.86 on me. When I lost you after you left Macquarie, who got to you? Who didn't? Whatever money you picked up for Haney belongs to the guys I work for. He wasn't supposed to gamble any of his dough until he was all squared up. Now, what happened to the hundred thousand? Okay, Marty, I did this before. I can at least try to... Not this time, Valentine. Oh! don't know what it was like going through that last show, not knowing what happened to Valentine and the money. That money means everything to us, Walter. Doesn't anybody care about Valentine just for his own sweet self? Oh, of course, Miss Brooks. I care very much. It's just He that was I... doing everything to save that darn money of yours. When he hopped out of the car, he knew he was making a clay pigeon of himself. Who knows where he is now or what happened to him. I know, and I'm sorry I started the whole now, mess. Now, Walter, don't get yourself unnerved. Remember, you have three performances tomorrow. Oh, what's the use? Well, don't we make a happy group? Lola. Yes, Walter? Oh, I thought we decided to give me a little time and then to... Walter, who is this woman? Well, I... That uh, can you... wait. I just want to say this. I found out what Valentine was doing for you, so I hired someone to follow and take the money away from him. What? What do you mean oh, you I... hired somebody? Where's Mr. Valentine? I don't know, but he didn't have the money on him. Oh, Lola, you shouldn't have... What else could I do to keep it away from you, Walter? You'd only gamble it away. I wanted to make sure whatever you owed would be paid off and we could make something out of our future together. Future together? What are you ranting about? Who are you? How's your blood pressure, Miss Haney? What's that? I happen to be your sister-in-law. No. Well, well. I was going to explain, Adele. As soon as everything got straightened out, I... I won't allow it. 
Whatever success Walter's had, his talent, everything, it's due to me. I never got married just so I could take care of him. I won't let this happen no matter what I have to do. Walter, you know where I'm spending my honeymoon? Alone. I'll be there waiting, but not for long. Oh, Lola! Walter, how could you do a thing like this? To me. Adele, for the love of heaven, why don't... Oh, just sit down there and knit. Do anything, but please stop talking. Oh, I've nothing to live for now. You're going to regret this, Walter. Mr. Haney, I'm sorry my sympathies are limited. But right now I'm only interested in George. What about these people you owe money to? They might have... Yes, 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 Miss Brooks, I've thought of it. I'm going to call them right now. Uh, room, room 418, please. Oh, that's all I'm good for, then. Just to sit here and... Hello, Miller. Miller, this is Haney. You got hold of Valentine? No? Oh. Yeah, I know, Miller. I'm quite sure you won't let me out of your sight. What did he say? Miller's boy, Marty, caught up with Valentine, too. Yes? I don't understand it. He didn't find any money, either. It was already gone. Then, Walter, you mean you still owe all that money? <sighs> That's right, Adele. Miss Brooks... Oh, I... save it, Mr. Haney. From here in, I'm crying copper and see if they can't find George. George! True love. She can still recognize oh, me. Oh, darling, when I saw you coming across the I know, the I know. Is that Haney's dressing room over there? Yes, George, but you're in no condition to do anything more tonight. Talk to him in the morning. I think if I just take everything slowly and surely, I'll be able to make it. Oh, golly. You see? There's nobody here. Come on, George, please. Wait a minute, Brooks. Slowly and surely, remember? Well, what is it? It's a note. Do you mind reading it, Angel? My eyes seem to be closing earlier tonight. There's an address to anybody. Go on, go on, read it, Angel. It says, when you've done what I've done to a life and seen the way it all worked out tonight, there's only one answer. When you find me, you'll know I wasn't afraid to face that answer. Wait a minute, this sounds like... Yeah, George. Slowly but surely, let's get down the hall to Haney's apartment. <laughs> Nobody here either, George. Go on, go on. Take a look in the bedroom. Make sure. He's got to be somewhere. Yeah, okay. Oh, so he took that way out. The fool and white... No, George, look. Adele. Close that door. Oh, why should she do that to herself? Do you think she got to the dressing room first and read the note Walter wrote? Brooksy, I got a feeling Walter never wrote that note. It was his sister. But it said, it said, when you've done what I've done, do a life. She meant her brother's life. Oh, Adele, Lola's here, and we just have to talk to you. Valentine. Hi. Are you all right? Oh, I, I can't tell you how sorry I am for everything that's happened. You sorry too, Lola? Why did you pick up those gorillas you hired? Mr. Valentine, I love Walter. That's the only excuse I have for what I did. But about the money... George, I... don't you think you'd better tell Mr. Haney? Yeah. Um, your sister's in the bedroom, Walter. Then I... Then I'd better go in and have it out with her right now about Lola and me. No, wait a minute. What? You better read this note. Adele! Oh, no. Oh, I've got to see her. She wouldn't No, do Walter. I don't think you'd better go in there. She decided to end it that way, and... Well, there's nothing you can do. Oh, oh good Lord. Walter, darling, don't. Oh, Adele... Adele never really meant any harm. I tried to save her from herself. Each year, it got worse, worse. You mean her gambling, don't you? Yes, Valentine. Her gambling? But, Walter, why did you let me go on thinking it was you who couldn't hold on to a penny? I owed something to her. It didn't matter if everybody thought that I was the black sheep. If I let it ride like that. It was an obsession with her. And then she got in over her head and... <laughs> and then this happened. <laughs> Will you cut it out, Henny? But it is funny, Valentine. There's not even the money now. There's something even funnier. But it doesn't make you laugh. What do you mean, Valentine? The hundred thousand dollars. When I jumped out of that car, I slipped it into your sister's knitting bag. George! Huh? Valentine! Yeah. She didn't know it, but she had it with her all the time. You see, your stage sister still took care of you, Haney. Ladies and 
gentlemen, we leave the fashionable resort of Las Rositas, the Monte Carlo of the West. The honeymoon haven of thousands of happy couples embarking on their life together. Oh, darling. Uh -huh. Golly, to think you took the trouble to memorize that part of the pamphlet. <laughs> Well, there's a lesson for every man in that gaudy little publication put out by the Chamber of Commerce. Oh, tell me more, dear heart. Joining all those happy couples are the thousands of divorcees who leave this desert mecca, their freedom papers clutched in their hot little hands. Hmm. I don't see anything like that in this pamphlet. <laughs> you should read the tables put out by the Bureau of Vital Statistics, Angel. Home, home on the range, where never is heard a discouraging word. Ah! If you've read your newspaper, then maybe you've read all about it. All about the new Chevron Supreme gasoline. And once you've tried new Chevron Supreme in your car, you can honestly say to yourself and to your friends, you can't buy a better gasoline. Look what it does for today's high-compression engines. Faster starts, quicker warm-ups, speedier getaway, and extra power on hills with never a knock. Count on new Chevron Supreme for all the power your car can deliver. It's a premium quality gasoline that's climate tailored. It gets the best out of your car in each different altitude and temperature zone wherever you drive in the West. Try a tank full of new Chevron Supreme tomorrow and you'll agree it's unsurpassed. Fill up at an independent Chevron gas station or a standard station where they say and mean... We take better care of your car. Next week, when we follow George Valentine as he hurries through the door of an expensive apartment, we'll hear... Oh, George! George! Easy, easy. Take it easy, Brooksy. Oh. Who's been pushing you around? I don't know what happened, George. That's just the way he was when I came, too. With that letter opener in his back. Who's he? Well, his name is Glenn Cooley. Oh, darling, I don't know whether I did it or not. Oh, this is just great. What are we going to do, George? Well, we can't find out by standing here. I got to prove you didn't do it before the police try to prove you did. Tonight's adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and Standard stations throughout the West. Robert Bailey is starred as George with Francis Robinson as Brooksy. Let George Do It is written by David Victor and Herbert Little Jr. and directed by Don Clark. Also heard in the cast were Ramsey Hill as Haney, Jeanette Nolan as Miss Haney, Ralph Sedan as Dirksen, Mark Lawrence as Marty, Pinky Parker as McCreary, and Charlotte Lawrence as Lola. The music is composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter. Your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System. <laughs>